Hi, my name is Chris Alpha. I'm the Woodwinds Product Manager at Dario, and I'm here with my good friend, Richie Hawley. Richie was principal clarinetist for the Cincinnati Symphony, and Richie is currently professor of clarinet at Rice University in Texas. How's it going, Richie? Great, very good to be here. Let's talk about reeds. As you and I both know, there are many options out there. Are there any basic rules that you can share about reeds? Absolutely, you've got a thinner reed, a thinner blank, you've got a traditional blank, and then there's the thicker blank. And what characteristics are there that differentiates one from the other? Well, I'll give you an example. The Rico reed is typical of a thinner blank reed. It responds really well, so it's easy for a student to use, but it also makes a full vibrant sound. A traditional type reed is the reserve. Professionals use this, advancing students. It's very clear, very focused. You play one of these reeds and you get a lot of wonderful projection and the sound is very centered and rounded. The thick blank is the reserve classic reed and that thicker piece of cane really adds a lot of tonal vibrations, very, very complex, a lot of lows and a lot of highs. But what's incredible about this design is that it has a cover over, almost like it's wrapped in pillows, so you get all of that vibration, but it still has a, a, a nice roundness, much like the, the traditional cut, but this has more of a, a vibrant core. How does a player know when a reed is right for them? A reed strength range can go anywhere between two, three, four, five, and that indicates how hard the reed is or how soft it might be. Same thing with the Reserve, and same thing with the Reserve Classic, or any brand of reed. Too soft and the reed will sound nasally, it'll sound bright, it'll sound buzzy, have a lot of edge to it. The opposite side of the spectrum is a reed that it's challenging to blow through. You turn bright red, uh, there's too much back pressure, uh, there's air leaking out of your mouth, and there's a sizzling bacon sound that might come through the, the clarinet itself. That reed's going to be too hard. Somewhere in between is that perfect strength. So there's no correlation between the numbers on the box and one's skill level? Absolutely not. That's a, a big mistake that a lot of students and parents think. They think my student is a beginner, so I've got to get a, a, a level one read. The number on the box has to do with the flexibility of the read, which is how we determine the strength. Is there any time when a player should experiment with other strengths? As a player develops, as their mouth strengthens, as their ears start hearing more details, they should really start experimenting with other strengths to see what is the best fit for their mouthpiece and their skill level.